and the woman that was only receptive to his word and his will. The Lord had prearranged the most difficult assignment for this woman, yet he also said, I'll be with you. I'm going to be with you. My presence is going to be with you. I'm going to fill you and anoint you with my power, with my strength, as you find yourself accommodative to what I've already called you to be. It was necessary, it was necessary for the Lord to approach this woman like this, and it is necessary for women in our society today to allow the Lord to approach them with his divine dictates, especially on such a wonderful day when we recommend his son as being born. Also, there was no greater favor than that of the presence of the Lord in the life of his child. Mary could not have asked for any greater message to come to her than that the Lord is favored with you. Ladies and gentlemen, and all you children also, if the Lord is not favored with you, you're in trouble on Christmas Sunday morning. If the Lord is not favored with how you're living, with how he can get his messenger from the messenger, through the message, in your heart, and how you respond it, there is no favor in your life. So we said, number one, the woman favored. Now we're getting ready to move on down to point number two, which is identified in verses 29 and 30. The woman flustered. All right, she was first favored. Okay, I'm favored. After she received that, then she became frustrated, flustered. What's going on here? Let's read the verses, verses 29 and 30. She was greatly troubled at this statement and kept pondering what kind of salutation or greeting this might be. And the angel said unto her, don't be afraid, Mary, you found favor with God. Now I see some interesting things in these verses and I hope that you see it. And I'm just gonna give it to you. When the Lord started talking with some of you sisters and he told you that he's favored you, tell the truth. How frustrated you get with him. I told you I don't want my life to be this way. All right. Well, let's check Mary out and see what happens. You see, my friends, there are legitimate reasons for such a reaction from a woman whom God had predetermined eternal recognition. He chose this woman to be recognized for thousands of years. He chose this woman because he knew that her character would be of such that history itself would speak about her righteous lifestyle. He chose this woman as a representative of what other women in the future, when Christ would die for their sins, would be like. He chose this woman because he knew that she would become flustered at him even sending his divine messenger to give her some good news. And whenever God speaks to us and we get frustrated, we call him a hard case God because we cannot have what we wanted in the first place. It was natural, and we're going to look at verse 29. It was natural that perplexity set in at such an announcement. Look at verse 29 again, and she was greatly troubled at this statement. That's natural, friends. That's natural. Not only when a preacher talks with you, you get upset. Now you let an angelic being come and talk to you. You're going to really be hot to trot. This was a very natural experience for this woman. You may sit in your pew, you may sit in front of me or in back of me and say, let an angel of the Lord come to me. I can take anything. He says, first thing he's going to tell you, drop that relationship. Drop it! Stop talking about that. Stop it! Stop contemplating that. Stop it! And you're going to tell that messenger of divine truth that came through the blessed Holy Spirit, you can take a frog leap jump. I'm not stopping nothing because this is my world and I'll do it my way. I got gotcha. you. He came to this woman and this woman was a renowned woman. It was not common that mortals were visited by eternal creatures and it is not common today. You don't find human beings visited by eternal creatures. As a matter of fact, when God sends a human creature to tell you something about his human divine word, you get so ticked off, the first thing you say is, who do you think you are? But yet you want him to send an angel. Oh, my friends, it's not going to be that way at all. Let's look at something else about this woman. And I see it in verse 38. I see that Mary was what? Look at verse 30. It says, and, and the angel said, don't be afraid, Mary. You found favor with the Lord. In the first part of verse 30, we see that Mary was three things, baffled, bewildered, and befuddled. She was just downright scared. See, and so now you can play it off all you want to. 
When God does something, that, listen, you're just downright scared. You, you let the Lord tell you, no, you can't take that promotion. You can't take that job. You can't take, why? Because that's going to keep you away from my children at church. Oh, no, 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 no. You can't go work with him. You can't go work with him because you know he got the hots for you real bad. And you know that you don't even know enough Bible to even say no. Because when you look at his eyes and he's blinking and you just get hypnotized and start leaning back, God has said, no, sweetheart. Stay there and tight. How long? Another five years. I'm going to tell you, I, I got that man out there picking up garbage. He'll be the make up for you. No, but I'll never be able to get this. You don't need that. When I'm ready for you, I'll give it to you. No, I'm telling you, my friend, she was baffled and bewildered and, and befuddled, just downright scared. What's going on here? My whole life is going to change. We talking about a woman that was living in the real world. Mary had to make sure that this was not a mental or a physical problem. She was saying, wait, am I hallucinating here? Am I freaking? What's going on? Now you telling me I'm not going to be this, but I'm going to be that? Oh, my friends, let's look at verse 30b. Mary's condition is somewhat disquieted by a calm statement for it says, hey, Mary, Mary, you found favor. Chill out. You found favor. Oh, man, isn't God good? God is saying, you found favor. Stop this fight on the inside. Ladies, did you know that most of our problem in the church today are these fights on the inside? I wonder where my husband is. Why are you worried about him? Why don't you ask God where you are? I wonder why he won't do this. No, the Lord is more concerned about why you won't do that. Well, now, if he didn't, wait a minute, what are you even comparing your life to anybody? What about God? See? And so we can get into those, you know, confused and all that kind of stuff like that. We also note something else about this woman. We note that the Lord uses a submissive woman and not a superwoman. Hey, I see that in here. Hey, she was submissive and not super. What we want in the 1990s is a superwoman Christian. I'm super saint. You ain't super. You ain't. He was looking for a submissive woman, not a superwoman. Mary wasn't walking around with a halo around her head. She wasn't walking around with a real nice white dress on, looking all like this and, you know, everything. The Lord is with me and all this. I mean, everybody in Nazareth would know it was her. She was submissive, ladies. Submissive. A terrible name in the English language. We don't want to submit to nobody. All oh, husbands, y'all know that's true, ain't it right? Ain't it right, brother? Honey, cook me this. Cook it yourself, fool. I ain't speaking with you for two weeks. Oh, ladies, submissive. I am superwoman. You need to become submissive woman. It's the kind that God chose on Christmas Sunday morning. I, I don't understand this. Right in the text, right in the text. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Mary's condition was somewhat disquieted by that calm statement. Just chill out, chill out. Ladies, whenever the Lord sends tidings by way of godliness, you ain't got no business being fearful. Whenever the Lord sends, hey, it's, it's going to be all right, what you need to do is say, hey, that's cool. Let it happen. Let it happen in my life, Lord. Whenever the Lord changes your plans, the first thing that you want to do is, now, wait a minute. Is this Jesus? You know what? I hear it around this church sometimes. Well, you know how Pastor John is. Ooh, you know. Why are you laughing, Jackie? Uh -huh. Oh, we know how he is. We know how John is. He won't let women do nothing. I'm looking for a submissive woman. I don't want no superwoman around me. I'm super girl. <laughs> you got a husband that you haven't spoken to in six months, right? But you come here blinking and, you know, jibber jibbing me. And then next thing I know, your old man going to be looking for me. <laughs> Submissive women. That's why God chose the Blessed Virgin Mary. I asked the youngsters a couple of days ago, do you think that God would choose a virgin in your church? And all of them just said, uh-uh. I said, yeah, y'all know folk already. <laughs> Ladies, when angelic promises proceed from the word of God, don't be fearful. 
You see, what happens is that whenever we get these angelic promises, we be freaking out. Don't freak out. Take the angelic promise for its worth because in the way that God gives it, he's going to give you the desires of your heart. You've got to understand the way God works. I'm looking for a good woman. Last week you found a real good man. Take her. Man, her belly's real big and it ain't yours. Take her. And now he's saying to the woman, I'm going to make your belly big and I don't want to see nothing. Ooh, let that happen today. Even in marriages, the husband may say, honey, I think it's time for us to have a baby. I can't do that. I'm working. Husband wants to see some children run around here. I can't do that. I won't be able to get my car, my clothes, my hair. Wrap that nappy head up and give him some babies. Submissive. I am superwoman going on the job. Nobody want to see your thighs, honey. Give that man some babies. So he can feel like he didn't created something. And we can grow up the Sunday school department. <laughs> Ooh, ladies, a study of the word of God satisfies uncommon fears. Has he visited you by means of the divinely inspired word? There's three things that you got to do. You got to cherish it. You've got to study it. And you've got to obey it. Mary cherished this word that God sent. She studied the words from the angel. And then her heart was being made ready to obey it. See, my friends, that's what makes Christmas work in 1994. If you don't cherish the word, study the word, and obey the word, it doesn't mean anything. You just become a word that you heard or the word that the bird said, the bird heard, did you hear the word? Don't mean nothing. This woman did something with it, and that's what makes a difference in Christianity today. Let's move on down to the third point. Third point, third point, third point. We've already looked at the first two. The third point is that the woman... Famous, verses 31 through 33. The woman famous. Let's read it together. And behold, you will, look at this emphatic language. You will conceive in your womb, not nobody else's, in yours. Ooh. You will conceive in your womb and bear a son. Not no daughter, not no twins, a son. And you shall name him Jesus. Ooh, this angel said... You don't have no decisions to make. It's already been made. The name is Jesus. And then he goes on and says, he will be great. He will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom will never stop keeping on. Man, this angel was talking bad. And this submissive woman took it in. Look at the woman today. I think our time is up. It's time for me to get out of here. <laughs> Set your behind down and listen. Trying to tell you something. You wonder why a lot of these women can't find a decent man? He don't want no superwoman. He wants a submissive woman. That's what Mary was. Are you listening to that stuff Pastor John talk? Oh, Sapphire, what you coming in here with your Bible for? <laughs> Walked in the door with your Bible. What you think you was going to hear? A sweet little Christmas story? Let's look at this and let's check this out. We must keep in mind that to be famous for righteous people is a far cry from that of the world. You see, being famous to the world... It's different from being famous with God. Being famous with God, you don't open up your mouth, you shut up. See the difference? But when you're famous in the world, you always got something to say. But you may say, Pastor John, your mouth is eternally running. <laughs> you also know that I'm not too famous with you either, right? And so we can, you know, disqualify that. See, my friends, it is people, it is money, it is things that makes us famous in this world, but you have to contrast that with what made her famous. Now let's glance at verse 31 and we'll see what this is. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. Now I would say never before I had a woman received any kind of frightening news like this. Never in the history of the human race has a woman just been chosen, you are gonna have a baby, that's it, never. 
Now, I know a lot of these women around here trying to feign that pregnancy. Uh, who is he? I, I, I don't know, Mama. Oh, you know. He has a name. He has a face. What do you mean you don't know? You can go to hospitals today, and a lot of these women are having babies. Uh, what's the father's name? Don't know. No, you're lying. You lured him in your bed. <laughs> His name is Reverend. I, well, what? <laughs> Reverend? What kind of a first name is that? <laughs> Reverend. Let me leave that alone, huh? Never before has she received anything. Something else, as we move on down, this was not a probability, rather, it was an outright problematic. This wasn't a probability statement. This was problematic for this woman. What? what? I'm going to be made great. Great. How am I going to be made great if what you're about to tell me just goes against what my brain is supposed to see? Now do you see the way God works? When God wants to lift you up, he's going to give you some stuff that's going to go against your right and left brain. God is beyond your right and left, you know, cerebral cortex and all that stuff. Well, now that's not logical. God is illogical. That's why further on, and we're going to get into that, he says, hey, it ain't nothing too hard for my father. See, but whenever God makes those decisions in your life today, first thing that you do is, oh, no, not me. I ain't going to do that. Yeah, right. I understand that. Medical science at times can only guess through the process of cameras what sex the child is going to be. But I think that we see three things here in these verses, and the first thing that we see is that he said it's going to be perfect conception. Perfect conception here. You're going to have a baby, and it's not going to be malfunction, nothing. All the fingers are going to be working, the mouth is going to be working, the legs, the toes, everything. God says, hey, no, you better listen to my messenger. This thing is going to work. How many of you? How many of you? God has your life perfectly outlined and you know it. And every day of the week you are fighting him and wondering why aren't you moving on. Perfect concept. It is conceived in the mind of God what he wants to do with the church today. Guess what we've done? We've said, not so, God. Time out. I don't want you dealing with my life like that. Perfect conception. Second thing, pronounced sex. He said, it's going to be a male. See, it wasn't a problem. It's going to be a boy. It's going to be a man. I don't want my Savior being no female. He's going to be a male. Mary didn't say, I just want me a little baby girl, so I don't want no stinking boy walking around here. I want a little girl so I can put a little bow in her head so I can look at my baby walking. Shut up! Pronounced a male. Ladies, listen. Listen! God's not concerned about you with your baby showers, you buy all that female stuff, and then you just say, oh, it's just another boy. Listen, let me share something with you. Males are an endangered species, especially in our community today. They were blessed and beloved 2,000 years ago. That's why I put a lot of my energies in males. God sent his son as a male and not a female. Doesn't mean you have anything against females. Look at Mary, ladies. Submissive and not super. Something else that I see here in this verse, and it's very, very plain. He gave him a given name. You shall name him Jesus. Oh, now what we do in our society when we lose our identity, we call ourselves Rasha Maranga. <laughs> Absalama Lima Booma Mama. I said, no, 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 you're not going to name him after no Africa. You're you going to name him Jesus, Savior, Messiah. <laughs> God ain't playing. God said he's going to be the savior. He's not going to be your plaything. Come here, Mambasa Malutu Gazinga. <laughs> Little boy come up with an African spear. Mambasa. Shut up. What do you know about Jehovah? We around here naming our children all this crazy stuff. Why'd you name him that? Egypt. You ever been there? Don't want to go. Change his name. Call him Joshua or something. 
Ooh, today's women would scream, man, you don't tell me, you don't tell me nothing. I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to name my baby that. I'm going to name him Karinga Karamba and everything else, La Bamba and everything.